animals are caught incidentally in nets, in trawls, and in long lines as unwanted catch and are thrown back overboard, so-called discarded, dead or dying. In certain fisheries, as much as 50% of the catch can be unwanted catch or bycatch. This is a hugely wasteful practice. It doesn't benefit the fishermen, and it certainly doesn't benefit the fish or the ocean health. WWF established the Smart Gear competition in 2004 to improve fishing gear so that we can actually ensure that we catch the fish that we want and that we leave the rest of the fish and marine animals in the sea. In 2014, the Smart Gear competition was won by a team of Norwegian scientists. And what they did was develop an air-powered sampling mechanism that you can use in so-called purseining, a type of troll or net uh, that is very effective at catching fish, but isn't necessarily letting the fishermen know what they're catching before they pull the net on board their vessel. So what this mechanism does is to allow uh, the fishermen to sample what is actually in the catch. Now, if the catch isn't of the right size or has too much of the wrong species, they can actually uh, let the net go and the fish are free uh, back in the ocean. But it also allows the fishermen to know if the catch is right, then they can pull the net on board the vessel. Another prize went to a team of Swedish fishermen and German scientists that developed particular devices to improve round fish fisheries. Now, one of the problems in these fisheries is that you don't only get uh, round fish such as cod, but you can also get flatfish. Now, what the scientists and fishermen wanted to do was to allow the flatfish to actually escape from the nets before they were being caught. So they developed particular windows uh, to be implemented into the net, sort of escape routes for the flatfish. Now, in the first round of uh, trials, the flatfish basically couldn't find its way out. Then what they did was develop particular guiding mechanisms that they put in between the windows, and they tilted the windows at uh, a different angle. And this resulted in the flatfish being able to escape from the nets before being caught, uh, reducing the unwanted bycatch by more than 50%. By coming up with smarter fishing methods, by developing smarter gear, we can actually improve the state of the world's fisheries, improve the ocean health, and also allow the fishermen to catch more fish in the future. Señoras y señores, Ladies and gentlemen, vamos a dar inicio entonces al segmento de pesca sostenible. Invitamos al señor Raúl Zúnico, subsecretario like de Pesca de Chile, Zunico, quien moderará este panel, Chile, Pesca Sostenible. Invitamos también a los panelistas a subir al escenario. Muchas Muy buenos días a todas y a todos. Good morning, everyone. Eh, soy Raúl Zúnico, My name is Raúl Zúnico, de, and the Secretary Chile. for Fisheries of Chile. And I would like to welcome que each and every one of you and noche, hope that you had a good time last night país. and that you've been able to enjoy el our country. Panel, this eh, panel on sustainable fisheries will focus on the necessary management tools to regulate fisheries no and combating no unreported and unregulated illegal fishing. One sustain, a sustainable management of fisheries requires innovation, research for the best possible decision making using new technologies that are cost effective and with a holistic approach to fisheries management, including water resources, marine environments, coastal communities that indirectly or directly depend on fishery, and all actors, including 
economic, social, and overall aspects. We all know that fishing will, has reached the levels that we could hardly grow in coming years. So we need to add value to our products and reduce losses in the processing and distribution chain. We need to address challenges to improve knowledge for the preservation and recovery of our fishing stocks. And also, we must oversee fishing operations from beginning to end, where we also need innovative and cost-effective approaches. Illegal fishing is a scourge that affects the sustainability of fisheries and presupposes disloyal competition against the farmers that make efforts to comply with domestic regional and world standards. Our speakers here are Dr. Renato Quinones from the University of Concepcion, Chile, Mr. João Aguiar Machado, Director General of uh, the DG Mare, European Commission, Campbell Davis from the Pelagic Predator Ecology and Dynamics Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organization Australia, Max Aguero from the Federico Santa Maria Technical University. And so I would now like to hand over to Dr. Renato Quinones, who will be speaking to us about the social aspects involved in the sustainable management of fisheries. Muy buenos días. Good morning. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here today. I'm going to use, however, my native language. Es un placer so, estar aquí, pero hablaré en español. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers of this event for the invitation and allowing me to reflect together with you on a topic that is usually not first place in our discussions, the issue of the behavior of the stakeholders and the cultural changes that are required in order to ensure world fisheries sustainability. At this conference, we've heard many presentations that have made it very clear that world fisheries sustainability is going through a difficult and complex time. And we've seen that unregulated and unreported illegal fishing represents 25% of total world fishing. So we are addressing issues of the utmost gravity. However, this reality, this issue, is not occurring in isolation, but rather it is part of the overall complexity of the socio-ecological problem. This is part of a much greater problem, and that has to do with how we manage the complexity of the socio-ecological systems and the role of man in the system. When we speak of failure in fishing management, the literature refers to six essential points, uncertainty of the data, the fishing models used, not very appropriate, or other times, the ecosystem structure, the El Nino phenomenon, and others that could lead to a collapse, and institutional efficacy or the dis economic discordance uh, between among stakeholders, or also issues related to scientific research. But in a second stage is a very essential problem. The behavior of these stakeholders and especially the culture that underlies that behavior. It is openly recognized in world literature that world fisheries and, and fisheries governance has to do with a particular problem called the wicked problem. Wicked problem. It could be compared to direct problems. A simple problem, if I have a bicycle and my bicycle chain breaks, the solution is simple, change the chain. And so if fisheries were that simple, we would not have the issues that we're facing worldwide. Fishing sustainability is part of this other type of problem, the wicked problems. As you can see here, it's difficult to know what we're showing here 
each one will interpret this differently, and that is what characterizes these wicked problems. Each stakeholder has a different approach. These issues are difficult to define. How can we improve education in this country? How can we improve the problem of delinquency? What is the problem of crime and delinquency? What is the problem of drugs? All of these are extremely complex problems, as are fishing sustainability. These are problems that I have no clear solution. Solutions are not correct or incorrect, or better or worse, depending on who is seeing them. These are unique problems that do not have solutions that could be transferred from, uh, from the experience of one country to another. And so, once we become aware of this, we must recognize that wicked problems include value judgments, which means that decision-making and governance is extremely difficult. So here we have a typical example of what happens when someone, in this case, you see the red circle here, attempts to use a direct approach to resolve a wicked problem. And so what we have here is a typical problem when we want to solve the issue of fisheries, a simple solution. For example, legal fishing, let's put police in our ports so we can solve the problem. We know that that is not the way to do it because each complex problem has a simple solution and that is wrong. In other words, there are no simple solutions for these highly complex issues. In addition, each stakeholder has a different view of the problem. And so that different perception, approach, and so on has to do with what? Meanings, values, identity. Let's recall Thomas's theorem, which was an essential theorem in modern sociology. What people perceive as real have real consequences. It is not the reality itself, but that what people perceive as real is so we want to modify the behavior of fishermen or other incumbent groups in order to promote fishing sustainability. We must go there to perception. And that has to do with what? Culture. What is culture? Well, we could be here for hours discussing that. But here we have a basic uh, definition. Culture is a system of shared beliefs, values, customs, behaviors, and artifacts that allow people to address their environment. And this culture is transmitted from generation to generation through learning. Institutions for fishing management are totally permeated by that culture of the ecosystem where they operate. And so, therefore, my message now is that this essential issue, the cultural issue, is of key importance and we must address it in depth. This is an example. Mocha Island in the central part of Chile. This is a paper that we did recently and we showed that thir between 32 to 68% of annual growth uh, revenues for fishermen, what is known as turf, is lost in theft, poaching, as a result of other nearby fishermen, but also fishermen that live in the, in the same island and the organization. So we have an issue here that has to do with culture. The same thing happens when we have measures to be adopted to protect uh, fisheries in the long term. However, most stakeholders give priority to the short term where we have demonstrations and political demonstrations of all type, and we often even authorities, members of parliament and others, that obviously will not support sustainability but the short term. So how to change all this? Well, through social learning. What we need to do is link models for behavioral change and fishing management. As a rule, this is not uh, does not go hand in hand. And what is social learning? This is precisely a process that could occur among stakeholders themselves if they are the, these relations are facilitated and if there is appropriate institutional support. To conclude, I would like to draw this analogy of the iceberg. As you can see, what normally when we talk about fisheries and sustainable, what we see is stock assessment, how to improve the ecological impact of fisheries, and how, talking about the effects of environmental variability and so on. 
Pero lo que está debajo But what del lies iceberg, beneath es lo que the water surface and what we should really address arriba, with far more intensely is stakeholder behavior and above all acting on cultural change. Some of you will be certain that I am dreaming, but there are examples. This has been done. Please note how perception worldwide has changed in relation to other matters as well, AIDS and so on. All of this is possible, but we need to become aware that this is an essential issue and that must be taken in by institutions and our discussions about fishing sustainability. Thank you very much. Hello. Bueno, le agradecemos al doctor well, Renato we Quiñones. thank uh, Dr. Eh, Renato Quiñones for that presentation. And I feel very much identified with what you have said, because for someone like me who holds a government position, this is a core issue. We get so much information from the scientific and technical teams, but most difficult is to convince the stakeholders to carry a policy out. I know that his presentation last uh, an hour and a half, so he's available for consultancy. A, a, al señor Joao, and now I'd like Aguilar to recognize Joao Aguiar Machado, who will speak to us about the EU common policy and also combating illegal fisheries. Thank you and, uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to speak of uh, two uh, issues during this panel dedicated to sustainable uh, fisheries. The first one is what the European Union is doing to ensure that fisheries in the EU are sustainable. Secondly, I would also like to address what we are doing to fight unsustainable illegal fishing. On the first one, 40 years after the European Union adopted its first measures on fishing, we have just finalized a major reform of the existing policy of fisheries in the European Union. The major objective of this reform is to secure fisheries that exploit fish stocks at levels that allow them to be healthy so that fishermen can maximize their catches year in, year out. This is what we call maximum sustainable yield. Achieving it means fishing sustainably, economically and ecologically. The common reformed fisheries policy sets out that this should happen by 2015 where possible, but in any case at the latest by 2020. To achieve sustainable fisheries, we have also introduced multi-annual plans that set a longer term framework than simply discussing annual quotas. These plans go hand in hand with strict rules for the fleets, which will not allow further increases of fishing capacity in the EU. And we also introduced a discard ban between this year and 2019, a landing obligation will gradually come into effect. The aim is to reduce unwanted catches, as we saw in the video, and eliminate the practice of discarding them into the sea. So the reformed EU fisheries policies with this element I've just outlined to you have, they represent a major step change in our policies to ensure that in the EU we will be fishing sustainably. Now, as I indicated, we are also fighting unsustainable illegal fishing. And in this area too, we have come a long way. In 2010, we have strengthened our fisheries control pillar by introducing three pieces of legislation. The first one is the IUU regulation. 
Secondly, the fisheries control regulation. And finally, the fishing authorization regulation. Based on these three regulations, we have introduced even stricter controls on our vessels, but also both in EU waters and in third country waters, while creating a new culture of compliance to ensure that fish can be traced from the net to the plate and the imported products are legal. The IUU regulation is not limited to the European Union. It is a leading legal instrument internationally, both in terms of its breadth and depth of intervention, and has become known to most flag states around the world. It not only provides validation of catch certificates, but it's also a basis for developing fisheries policies, in particular fleet management and control. Until now, we have dealt with around 50 countries, non-EU members under this regulation. More than half of these countries have taken a positive attitude and have addressed without hesitation the shortcomings that we have identified and they have joined in our effort to fight against IEU fishing. Of course, we have also come across countries who have been less willing to address the issues related to the obligations of flag states. And in those cases where we have found countries that have been less cooperative, we have not hesitated to put to the world the weakness that we have identified. In our system, and uh, during, drawing a parallel to football, we call it, we present the yellow card. Uh, during six months following, we enter in cooperation, in dialogue, and we even provide assistance to these countries to comply with uh, the shortcomings that we have identified. If it does not work, if the countries are not cooperative, then we present a red card, which means that these fishery products from those countries cannot enter in the EU market. In the, indeed, it becomes a trade ban. But I want to underline here today that our objective is not to impose a trade ban. Our objective is to induce change of behavior, is that the countries that cooperate with the EU, we are one of the largest markets in the world for fishery products, so we can exercise our market to the benefit of legally sound fishing. But as I indicated, by and large, our experience has been that our bilateral discussions have produced great results with many countries that we have dealt with under this new approach. They have put measures in place that may be obvious to some countries but are absent in others, such as a proper legal framework and a proper sanctioning system. Such a fundamental framework is an impart important part of fight against IAU fishing. So is cooperation among authorities within and across borders. But we believe that we have to go a step further internationally. IEU fishing is only interesting if you can sell that fish to market. And that's why we have gone that step further ourselves by preventing entry of such fishing into the EU. But as long as the EU does that alone, they will find other ways to sell their products to other markets. So we need to cooperate all internationally. Not only flag states that are crucial, but also port states that are controlling their ports, and coastal states that are controlling their EEZs, and also market states and processing states controlling traceability. And last but not least, on chartering states and on states of nationals involved in IEU fishing. At international and regional level, we must act 
to ensure that the FAO International Plan of Action on IEU is properly implemented, that the Port State Measures Agreement is ratified by enough countries so that it enters into force, that the obligations and performance reviews are introduced for all states related to the fishing industry, from net to plate that the fight against IEU is further strengthened in regional fisheries management organizations, and that we achieve full traceability for fisheries products and large market states jointly take action to prohibit imports of IEU products. If we make an effort to introduce and truly implement these tools, we can reduce IEU fishing considerably. This will contribute to a better sustainability of fish stocks and the livelihood of coastal populations. The fight against IEU fishing remains a top priority for the European Union. We call not only on all states, but also upon all operators and citizens to join us locally, regionally and globally on these ongoing battle against perpetrators who constantly adapt to attempt to undermine our efforts. Thank you very much.